NL Central foes clash in the Queen City. Each are right in the thick of contention heading into the second half. Here's play-by-play -play man Tom Brunneman. Well, if you had to pick a pair of teams to begin the second half of the season against one another, doesn't get much better than Carlos Beltran and the St. Louis Cardinals taking on Brandon Phillips, Joey Votto and the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds winning the opener of this three-game series here last night. And we welcome you to Great American Ballpark along the banks of the Ohio as the race is heating up mightily inside the National League Central Division. The Reds and the Pirates tied atop of it with St. Louis just two and a half games behind. And a pleasant good afternoon to you. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Baseball on Fox. Not only do these teams clash on the playing field, they have clashed off the playing field. And, Tom Bernucci, you can make a very strong argument that if there's a better rivalry in all the National League, you'd be hard-pressed to find it. Absolutely. It's a fierce one and a real one, Tom, because there is some dislike here. We're talking about brawls on the field, all-star snubs, but it's a rivalry because they're separated only by two and a half games in the Central. Even and the schedule maker is contributing to the rivalry. The second half starts between these two teams, and the season ends with these two teams. Before we get there, though, Tom, great pitching matchup today. We got Kyle Loesch for the Cardinals and Mike Leake for the Reds. Both right-handers have been on top of their game for the last two months. But, as usual with these two teams, something has to give. We'll see what happens. Stick around. Generally, there are fireworks when these two teams get together, especially Brandon Phillips and Yadier Molina. Defensively at their positions, the very best in all of baseball. The Reds and the Cardinals collide in Cincinnati next on Fox. For game two of this three-game weekend series, Mike Matheny took over for Tony La Russa, of course, during the offseason. And his Cardinals starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. For Cole, Jay, and Holiday at the top, Beltron, Craig, and Molina in the middle. For the latter third of David Freeze, Skip Schumacher, and nine and two right-hander, a one-time red, Kyle Loesch. And starting at four, Cincinnati, a former number one draft pick out of Arizona State. 24-year-old right-hander Mike Leake. And for Mike Leake, it's really important to get through this first inning. He has a 5-6-2 ERA in the first inning. The other thing he needs to stay is stay grounded, especially in this ballpark. He's a ground ball pitcher. And in this ballpark, Tom, especially in the daytime, you get the ball up in the air, you're asking for trouble. Our opening pitch today from the Queen City brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some Bud. Rafael for a call to lead things off. The National League starting shortstop for the All-Star game looks at ball one, and this one is underway. For call at 274, five home runs, 36 runs batted in. Only Albert Pujols during their careers with a higher batting average against Cincinnati pitching than for a call. A ball and a strike. When I talked about Leak's first inning troubles, that actually plays into the hands of the Cardinals. Only the Rockies have scored more runs in the first inning. Cardinals are a quick strike team. Leak getting ahead of one ball and two strikes. Leak only 24 years young. This is an extremely young Cincinnati starting rotation. And you certainly can make the case that it's been the National League's best starting rotation over about the last month and a half of the season. Crowd didn't like the fact that Fracol was granted timeout by the home plate Andy Fletcher, the umpire, calling the balls and strikes today. Many Cardinal fans certainly making note of the fact that Lance Berkman is not in the Cardinal starting lineup today. He has been out for quite some time. In fact, he's only played in less than two weeks worth of games during the season initially with a bad hamstring and then shortly thereafter undergoing knee surgery. He convinced his manager Mike Matheny he did not need to go on any kind of minor league rehab and many expected him to be in the lineup here today. Ken Rosenthal who joins us as part of our broadcast team has that here in just a moment. 
That's veteran privilege right there, Tom, when you don't have to do a minor league assignment after being out for a couple of months. Bouncing ball back up the middle, and Phillips tried to barehand it. Even if he feels it cleanly, he probably doesn't throw out for a call who begins a game with a base hit. Well, for more on Lance Berkman, here is Ken Rosenthal. Hi, Kenny. Tom, thanks. You said it. Lance Berkman is active. Cardinals have demoted Shane Robinson, but he is not in the lineup. And the reason is manager Mike Matheny doesn't want to play him two days in a row just yet. And he wants to play him tomorrow night against Johnny Cueto. Berkman is 8 for 26 off Cueto lifetime with two homers. Pleasure to be joined by Ken Rosenthal. We'll be checking him with him on a number of topics throughout the day. And of course, we're getting closer and closer to that trade deadline. As John Jay, first pitch, Hacken pops it up into left field. The former Cardinal Ryan Ludwig is there, one out. Cincinnati is the best defensive team in the National League. And it begins in their outfield. Stubbs flanked by Ludwig and Bruce, the longtime Cardinal. Scott Rowland back in the lineup, joining Gold Glove winners Phillips and Votto, and the rookie Devin Mesoraco hanging the signs for Mike Lee. Most players are thrilled when the All Star break comes around, if for no other reason, just to rest up the body. Of course, Matt Holliday went to the All Star game, a replacement for his teammate Yadier Molina. But leading up to the break, over 21 games, he had knocked in 21 runs and hit better than 450. He's on a 12-game hitting streak, and he extended it the hard way last night off a of Roldis Chapman late in the game off a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. Of course, that bat was in about 11 pieces, <laughs> glittered all over the infield on that roller up the first baseline, but a hit nonetheless for the Red Hot Holiday. Chapman nailing down. The save and a 5-3 win, striking out the side outside of that hit. Runner goes. Mesoraco couldn't find the handle. And that'll be a steal four for a call. His second in as many games and 11 on the year. Yeah, that's a veteran there picking a good pitch to run on off-speed pitch here from Leak. Normally does a very good job holding runners, but see, there are no slide step plus the off-speed pitch. You do the math on the timing of both of those, and it's an easy stolen base for for call. Two balls and a strike on Holiday. Wave through a hanging off speed pitch to even account. Of course, Holiday this year plugged into that number three hole, which for a little over a decade belonged to the main man, Albert Pujols. And here are the Cardinals, knowing when this season began they wouldn't have pools after leaving to go to Anaheim they knew early on they more than likely would be without their ace Chris Carpenter throwing in excess of 270 innings including the postseason a year ago yet here they are only two and a half games behind the co-leader Cincinnati and the Pirates. a fastball right by him up and in and that's the second out of the inning. See this fastball get by Holiday all set up by the breaking pitch right before that which probably is more up in the zone than Mike Leake wanted but backing that up with a 90 mile an hour fastball with some tail on it as Holiday behind that fastball. Great change of speeds. Now Carlos Beltran. What a pickup he has been in the absence of pool holes. His Cardinal lineup leading the National League in virtually every major offensive category, including batting average, hits, runs, runs batted in, second only to Colorado hitting with runners in scoring position, and they have one right now for Beltron. 2-0. Oh, he sees it's got a base open here with two outs. Craig on deck. Certainly not giving in early in the count with fastballs. Going to the breaking balls. You got to believe he's going to stay on the edges of the strike zone, if in the strike zone at all in this at bat. Caught the inside corner there, two and one. 
And that's the comeback two-seamer for Mike Leak. That really is key for him against left-handed hitters. Early in the season, he relied way too much on the cut fastball, everything riding in on left-handers. Now he's got that ball starting at the hit and breaking back over the plate. Bouncing ball to Phillips. He'll come get it. And Leak pitches around a leadoff hit by for Paul. Cincinnati comes to bat last in the first inning in a scoreless game. Well, sometimes you got to live Moss, a rookie Zach Cozart at short, Drew Stubbs and Joey Votto. Brandon Phillips in a cleanup spot. Jay Bruce in right, Ryan Ludwig in left. Roland Mesoraco and Leak. The latter third for Dusty Baker. Kyle Loesch was a trade deadline acquisition by the Reds back in 2006. Spent about a year and a half here in Cincinnati and having his best start coming off his best full regular season a year ago. And for Kyle Loesch, everything works off of a first pitch strike. Almost 70% first pitch strikes. Only Cliff Lee is higher in Major League Baseball, but it doesn't stop there. He's a control freak even after strike one. Throws fastball slider, curveball change, both sides of the plate typically down in the zone. Hozart, the rookie shortstop at 249, has nine home runs. He has 21 doubles. And there is certainly some note to the 21 two base hits. They're the most ever by a rookie shortstop prior to the All Star game. Had one more than Nomar Garcia Parra. And he normally is swinging early and often. That's been the story of his Cincinnati team, which Tom, through the years, has always been known as a power packed lineup. This year, they've been living with great pitching and great defense, more so than offense. Still waiting for that offense to come around, especially at the top of the lineup. Going on three pitches is Kozak. One out. I mean, Kyle Loesch, he pitches a game as if he left his car engine running. He doesn't waste pitches. 0-2, he's going to attack, attack, and attack. Doesn't matter what the count is. He's always in attack mode. And you saw it right there. It seems like you step in the batter's box and it's 0-1. And he wants to finish you off as quickly as possible. Normally, strikeouts not a part of his game. He wants to get the ground balls. Trying to butt his way on his stubs. Barehanded by Freeze. That's a nice play by David Freeze, the World Series. Most valuable player a season ago. He throws out the speedy stubs. Said a great play by Freeze. Once he saw the hand go up on the bat, he was in quickly. Bare hand play made a difficult play look easy. Well, now Joey Votto, two years ago, the National League's most valuable player. This season, among the National League's top ten players in virtually every statistical category, he leads the National League in six of them, including doubles, walks, on base percentage. Extra base hits. But certainly a big story for the Reds, and you pointed it out. By and large, the top two hitters in their lineup have not been getting on base very frequently. So Votto, a lot of the time, is coming to the plate with nobody on base. Yeah, it's been a problem throughout the season. You saw last night he took all four plate appearances with nobody on base. Once again here tonight, first at bat, nobody on base. 56% of his plate appearances this year have been with the bases empty. In fact, the Reds rank dead last among all National League teams in on-base percentage from the top two batters in their lineup. Zibato checks in fifth with that 344 average. What a year for Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates. Certainly in that MVP discussion and giving you some perspective on the lack of run scoring opportunities for Joey Votto. Matt Holliday, the Cardinals, their number three hitter, has batted with 65 more base runners than has Joey Votto. But to me, Tom, that's going to be the key to the second half season for the Reds is to get people on base in front of Joey Votto. Not so much what's behind him, but what's in front of him. 3-2 delivery on Votto, and that swung on and dropped foul and out of play. Well, that has been topic number one here in Cincinnati. You know, you, you read the newspapers, you turn on talk radio. It's what are the Reds going to do, if anything, about addressing the top of their batting order leading up to the trade deadline. Do they handle it internally? Or do they go outside the organization and try to find someone else? 
Well, I'm sure Walt Jockety, the general manager, is looking outside the organizations. I think it's very difficult to find someone to hit behind Joey Votto. It's easier in terms of availability and value to find a hitter who can hit one or two in the lineup. That one hit down the third baseline and out of play. Ken Rosenthal has more on that topic. Kenny. Tom, yesterday I asked Walt Jockety about that very issue, and he said right now the trade market is simply not there. But Tom is absolutely right. Much easier to find a leadoff hitter than a cleanup man. Some of the names in play, Juan Pierre and Shane Victorino from the Phillies, maybe David DeJesus from the Cubs, Denard Span from the Twins, but right now, all's quiet. Well, that's a great point, Kenny. And all those names that you mentioned, Victorino being a switch hitter, could bat from the left side. And I think that's a need for the Reds as well. No team in the league has a higher percentage of bats from the right side than do the Reds. For balance in a perfect world, a left-handed hitter fits the bill. Tenth pitch in this at-bat, Loesch against Votto, and he struck him out swinging in a perfect first inning. End of one. No score. Today's game presented by Budweiser is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. And by Michelin, a better way forward. On the banks of the Ohio River, we welcome you to Cincinnati. Game two of this three-game weekend series between the Cardinals and the Reds. Tom Verducci pointing out. A short while ago, they'll start the second half against one another and they'll end the season against one another. As Alan Craig first pitch swinging against Mike Lee, bounces out to Scott Rowland. See Rowland back in the lineup today, did not start last night, but once again, second time now we've seen the Cardinals go after the first pitch. It's part of Mark McGuire's philosophy, the Cardinals hitting coach. If you see something early in the count, typically fastballs, jump on it. Yadier Molina, good example of that. Dead first ball, fastball hitter, 371 on first pitches. No team in the league attacks first pitches like the Cardinals do. Off the end of the bat, first pitch, and Stubbs will run it down. So two pitches for Lee to get two pretty easy outs. Let's check in now, Tom Verducci, our forward keys to the game. Ford, go further. Yeah, for me, for the Cardinals, beware the sixth and seventh inning. They've had troubles all year. ERA is close to five or over in those innings. Those have been the swing innings for the Cardinals and in the wrong direction. And for the Reds, we've talked about this already. Base runners for Joey Votto. Make sure you give him RBI opportunities. Seventh inning was the decisive inning on the downside for the Cardinals here last night. Adam Wainwright was cruising right along, went through six innings and allowed three hits and only one run. And Cincinnati scored three in the bottom of the seventh and went on to win five to three. That's been remarkable. It's just, as I said, a season-long issue for them. They've been outscored in those two innings by 11 runs. All other innings, they've outscored the opposition by 79 runs. So whether it's starting pitcher or relief pitcher, they've had issues mid-game. One and two on David Free. We've seen Leak showcase that breaking ball a little more than usual than he typically will. Threw it again, and it's fouled back to the screen. Of course, it doesn't matter if David Freeze ever gets another hit, and of course he will get many. But after what he did during that postseason run last year for the Cardinals and the LCS in the World Series, especially Game 6, the two critical hits to keep the Cardinals in the series, sending it to a game seven. He'll be a part of Cardinal lore forever. Shot in the right field, and that's a two out hit by Freeze. And then it's bobbled by Bruce, and Freeze going to take the chance in a second, and he will beat the throw. That'll be a single and an error, and right now it's a direct TV game break. Let's go to Greg Amsinger to check in. Tom, thank you. Prince Fielder extends his hitting streak to 10 straight with this one the other way. The Tigers are looking for their seventh straight win. Check out the slide. Love it. It's 1-1 in Baltimore. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 
Direct TV. Tom and Tom, back to you and Cincy. Greg, thank you very much. Be looking forward to hearing from you with updates throughout the afternoon. Meanwhile, with a number eight hitter coming up and a base open, the Reds aren't going to take any chances. Uh, to me, this is a no-brainer. Skip Schumacher has been very good this year with runners on base. It, no matter what those numbers would tell you, I think you just have with two outs, just you want to attack the pitcher on deck. You have the out sitting there in the on deck circle. Take advantage of it. Well, there's ball four to Schumacher, and here comes Kyle Loesch. Four hits in 36 at bats for Loesch. Here's the base hit. You see Bruce kind of lay back on it and just kind of jumped up on him. You know, went after it very casually, but letting that ball bounce that very last time, it jumped up and hit the heel of the glove. Talked about the Reds being the best defensive team. Often that error is total, can be very misleading. For Cincinnati, it is not. Not only are they a great defensive team, they get to just about everything. That is a rare miscue indeed. Oh, one pitch. And it's served into the glove of Votto, and that'll end the inning. A hit, an error, two men left. Phillips, Bruce, Ludwig coming up. No score. Game being presented by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Kyle Loesch coming off a 1 2 3 opening inning. Brandon Phillips to start things here in the red second inning, and you know, getting back to what we were talking about earlier. Topic number one, Ken Rosenthal addressed it along with Tom Verducci about you know, the Reds trying to tinker with the top of their batting order. And I made the comment about, you know, looking inward rather than outward to begin with. And there are a lot of people that forget when this season began. After Brandon Phillips over the final month and a half of last season went into the leadoff spot, he hit 350. Now, he's not going to hit 350 over the course of a year, obviously. But he very... Good on base percentage. There's a one hopper off the chest of for a call, and Phillips will reach on the air. And some feel like, why not put Phillips back at the top of the order again and see if that works a little better? There's no doubt it's something that has to be in the thought process of Dusty Baker. As we take a look at this ball, you can almost see this coming because this is an in between hop. Similar to a first baseman, hates those in between hops on the throws. Watch for Kyle, not sure what to do, back up or come in, and he played it in between. And he got that nasty half hop. Not hit especially hard, but it was more where the ball bounced in front of Prakal that made the play so difficult. Prakal charge with an air, so the leadoff man aboard for Jay Bruce here in the second inning. Bruce first pitch swinging, a lazy fly ball in the center field. One out. Uh, they, they know the scouting report on Kyle Lowe. She's going to throw strikes on first pitches. There's no question about that. I think the difficulty with Loesch, though, is that he does not throw get me over strikes for first pitch. He throws quality pitches for first pitches. So he, it's not as if you can just be blindly aggressive on first ball hitting. Now the former Cardinal Ryan Ludwig. After bouncing around with a number of organizations, including Texas and Cleveland, to begin his professional career, he was given the chance by Walt Jockety and Tony La Russa in St. Louis in 2007, and his career took off. A year later, an all-star, hit 37 home runs, knocked in over 100 runs, nearly did it again the following year. Was traded to San Diego two years ago, and this is his first season with the Reds. Yeah, you see, he's been hot lately, and he's always crushed left-handed pitching, but lately he's been very good against right-handed pitching as well. Once again, first pitch swing here. We've seen it all throughout this inning. And just to back up that point about Loesch being so tough on first pitches, Tom, normally the league it hits 334 on first pitches. Generally, you're going to swing at pitches early in the count that you know you can hit well. 
But against Loesch, balls put in play on first pitches, hitting 100 points less, 231. So you're playing into his hands by swinging at quality pitches on first pitch. Knocked down by Lowe. She caught a break rolling right to for a call and they get the out of Phillips at second base who went in hard cleanly hard to Schumacher. Of course there's been so much bad blood between these two teams whenever Brandon Phillips or Yadier Molina or for that matter the injured Chris Carpenter when any of those three players have any sort of play in a game like that when it's a clean slide it's a good play hard play aggressive play by Phillips but everybody gets on the edge of their seats both in St. Louis and Cincinnati just waiting for something anything to happen you're absolutely right that was a clean slide right over the bag he did come up out of that slide with the shoulder but there's nothing wrong with that good hard baseball but the history does come into a play with a rivalry like this. Scott Rowland decided enough of this first pitch swing. I'm going to take ball. And again, just off the plate. Rowland coming off his third surgery on his left shoulder during the offseason. Pronounced himself fit and feeling better than he had in years. Was in the lineup batting cleanup when his season began. He's had back problems, shoulder issues again. Just recently missed a week with a bad back. And there is a base hit in the center field by Roland. And Ludwig will advance first to second. We talked about some of the history between these two teams. And many feel the bad blood began, you know, going way back to 2007. When the Cardinals are 2009, when they came in here for the final three games of the year and complained and complained and complained about the balls being slick here in Cincinnati. A year later, they had a benches clearing brawl after Brandon Phillips had made some unkind comments about the Cardinals. The real stinger, though, was April 2011. We'll get back to that in a moment. Where the Reds and Cardinals were playing a big series in St. Louis early in the year. Knowing the rivalry, knowing the fight that had happened the season before. And all of a sudden, just a short while before a game was supposed to start, the Cardinals scratched their starter, began the game with a reliever. The game went into the first inning, and they had better than a two-and-a-half-hour rain delay. The Reds had lost their starter. As there's a tapper down to third. And Freeze will throw out Mezzarocco. We'll come back to all this just to set the stage in case. We're back after a word from your local Fox station. Two here in Cincinnati. The Reds and the Cardinals. Kicking off the second half of this 2012 regular season. And the top of the order for a second time. It's for a call. Who singled, stole a base. And was stranded at second base in the opening frame. No runs, two hits, an error for St. Louis. No runs, one hit, an error for Cincinnati. It's one and one on for a call. to the count and we'll do it once more you know to tie a ribbon around the history the recent history between these two teams you move forward to May a month after the April incident when there was a screaming match between Dave Duncan and the former Reds closer Francisco Cordero and then here recently the whole thing was sort of you know brought to life again Tom when you thought it was all over Many in Cincinnati feeling that there was an all-star snub for both Brandon Phillips and Johnny Cueto based on their involvement of a fight between these two franchises back in that 2010 season. Yeah, I think the players are eager to move on, Tom. In fact, Joey Votto talked about that at the all-star break. Let's just be about baseball from here on out. Interesting, before the game last night, 
Yadier Molina and Johnny Cueto principals and uh, some of the fireworks that have gone on between these two teams had a very long discussion. By the mound, that's Cozart. He'll throw out his counterplay. Let's check in once more with Greg, Am Greg Amsinger for a direct TV game break. Greg. Hey, Tom, last time we were in Baltimore, Prince Fielder gave the Tigers a 1 0 lead. Jim Tomey, who's sitting third in the lineup for the O's, brings him back. He uh, drives in Marcakis. It is 1 1 in the bottom of the second. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get direct TV. Call 1 800 direct TV. Tom, Tom, back to you in Cincinnati. Greg, thank you very much. Baltimore, after that blazing start, Tom Verducci has really cooled off. They've lost seven of their last 10, including their last three, and they're four over. Yeah, they're one of these teams that had a lot of success out of the bullpen early on, and starting pitching seems to have caught up with them recently. 0 oh 2 to John Jay. Swing and a miss, and the first two retired by a leak here in the third. Tom, you and I were talking about really the, the, the great move made by Major League Baseball during the offseason, adding a second wild card. Take a look at the way it looks right now <laughs> for that second wild card spot. That's going to be something else. I mean, people may not realize Oakland and Toronto, they're in it. They're heavily in it. And when we get to September, Tom, what I like is almost every game will have meaning to it. Very rarely will you have matchups among teams who are not playing for anything. So every night of September to me should be extremely interesting. You know, if we have a moment, well, let's go back and look at that again. As that one is driven into right center field, we'll get back to it in the bottom of the third inning. Just to digest it for a minute. All the teams very much in it. Still no score. Had a lot of rain around the downtown area earlier this morning. And we're hoping to dodge the rain and get this one in today. Strike one to Mike Leak, and this guy is no easy out. Ten hits and 30 at bats with a pair of home runs. One and one to Leak. And how about that? He's got the bunt in his arsenal as well. Not a bad idea. If David Freese was playing back at third base. Leak not only an outstanding. Pitcher at Arizona State University, but also an outstanding offensive player. And many of you know the story, but perhaps many of you don't. One of only 21 players ever to make their professional debut in the major leagues without a single day playing in the minor leagues. Two and two on league. Now Loesch has allowed just one base hit. Full foul. The turnaround by Loesch has really been amazing for the fans that saw him pitch before arriving in St. Louis, originally in Minnesota, a couple of years here in Cincinnati, and a short stint in Philadelphia. Because that one has popped up to the right side for Alan Craig, one out. And especially when you consider the fact, Tom, that he had a very unique surgery, which we'll talk about in a moment. But again, just to digest that American League wild card race, and granted, we're only in the second week of July, but all of those teams right now and where they stand with more than just a fighting chance. Of course, the question becomes for all of those teams, are you a buyer? Are you a seller? Leading up to the trade deadline at the end of the month. What about it, Ken Rosenthal? Well, Tom, the way I see it, you can only be a serious buyer if you've got a shot at the division title. Otherwise, if you're going only for the wild card, if you're that far out of the division race, you're basically going all in on a one-game elimination. And guys, I cannot see the logic of trading prospects, giving up a lot, when you're looking at a possible one-game elimination against the other team's ace. Tom Verducci, you agree with that? Why? Well, Generally, yes, but there are individual circumstances where a team would sign up for that opportunity just to get one postseason game. I.e. the Pittsburgh Pirates. 
Toronto, Pittsburgh. There's a lot of teams out there that had a long wait to see postseason baseball. I think it's a hard sell to your fans in July to say, you know what, we're not going to go for it because we're not guaranteed to win a division title. And I think to answer to your fan base sometimes is part of a general manager's job, even if sometimes you feel like, you know, as Ken mentioned, maybe it's not worth it, or at least it's a more of a risk, more on the risk side to make a deal this month. But I do think there's a certain demand now when we get to this time of year, Tom, that fans, if they see their team close. That one's in the air to left field. Plenty of room out there in this homer-friendly Great American Ballpark for Matt Holliday. And again, let's check in with Greg Amsinger at the MLB Network for a game break. Tom, thank you. Eric Hinsky's hitting eighth, playing left for the Braves against R.A. Dickey with the bases loaded. Going the other way, up against the fence. Two will score. The Braves tack on another. It is 3-1 Atlanta in the top of the third. And watch out for the Braves. They've won five straight. And many people want to know, will the Braves be a serious buyer, Tom? And Tom, what do you think of Cincinnati? Strike one to Drew Stubbs. Well, the Braves are right in the thick of all of it. They're only four games behind the Washington Nationals for the division lead. There's a two-out hit by Stubbs. So one of your keys to the game, Tom Verducci, all do respect there are two outs in the inning. But Votto will bat with a runner on base. And speaking of the standings in the National League, take a look. Not nearly as many teams involved in that wild card. Man, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I think two teams not on that board right there that really f I find most intriguing, Miami and Philadelphia. Philadelphia sitting on Cole Hamels and Shane Victorino I think will be a big-time player. Miami has so much invested in this particular season with opening of the new ballpark. They have to go for it. Under 500 at this point, but they have to consider themselves a contender. Stubbs extremely fast, but Loesch very tough to run on. And when you throw in the addition of Yadier Molina behind the plate, teams frequently are reluctant to run against this combination. As Votto is hit with a pitch. There's certainly nothing Loesch wants to do right here. It just yanks this cutter. Keeps running inside on Joey Votto. Well, now for Cardinal fans, here comes public enemy number one, and that would be Brandon Phillips. And if there is one player that seems to raise his level of play, and it's already a very high level to begin with, but it seems whenever the Reds and the Cardinals get together, both Molina and Phillips are on their game. No doubt about that time. We saw that last night with Brandon Phillips. Just had terrific at bats. And I think he does respond to all the energy and excitement around this rivalry. Phillips had three hits in the game last night. Scored a couple of runs. Molina had a couple of hits. Breaking ball off the outside corner. 1-0. Bit of a hanger there, and Phillips fouls it back out of play. It even accounted one and one. Scoreless game. Reds threatening for the second consecutive inning. They had two on with two outs in the second. And now two on after two are out in the third. You're right about a bit of a hanger there, Tom. It's not too often against Kyle Loesch. You will see that slider stay up in the zone the way that it did to Brandon Phillips. Two out, two balls and a strike. Loesch facing Brandon Phillips.
Pull the string on him once more, and Phillips waves through it to even the count of two and two. Yeah, this is the gold standard for Kyle Loesch is this changeup. Doesn't matter, left-handed, right-handed, he throws it to anybody in any count. Phillips only four hits in 20 career at bats against this Cardinal right-hander. And now the break-even pitch with two aboard and two out. Out of play. And you see him double up on the changeup right there to Phillips. Tremendous confidence in that pitch. Watch the location here. Just dives to the bottom of the strike zone. Phillips does a nice job there getting to another pitch. Slow breaking ball, and again, Phillips missed it in the air to John Jay. Reds have left four in the last two innings, still no score. Or go further, and by the makers of One a Day Men's, the official multivitamin of Major League Baseball. Take a look at our Twitter poll question. Who is the biggest surprise team in the National League? The Dodgers, the Pirates, the Mets, or the Washington Nationals? Tweet your vote to at MLB on Fox. How would you answer that question, Tom Verducci, as it's ball one to Carlos Beltran? I'm really intrigued, not to cop out, but I'm really intrigued to how that vote turns out. Because any one of those choices is a great choice. I might have to go with the Pirates, though. In the air, right center field, Stubbs is there, and Beltron retired to begin the fourth inning. You know, anytime you're talking about looking for your first winning season in 20 years, you've got credentials to be a surprise team when you're sitting here tight first place as we start the second half. Many forget the final winning season the Pittsburgh Pirates had was the play which many of us will never forget. On the base hit into left field, Barry Bonds then with the Pirates charging in to try and throw out Sip Bream at home plate. Throws slightly offline to catcher Mike LaValier, sending the Braves on to the World Series. The Pirates have not had a winning season since that 1992 year. The time you know you talk to the Cardinals, you talk to the Reds. And they fully respect the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is not a fluke, especially the way their bullpen has pitched this year. And I think it looks like it's a three-team race heading into September. Pirates in first of the All-Star break for the first time since 97. That one hooked down the left field line. And a foul ball. Well, they're fired up in a steel city over there. Box. This is deep. This is gone. Calls from our buddy Greg Brown back in Pittsburgh, PA. Fans have been filing into PNC Park regularly to watch the Pirates. They're on the road to begin the second half, and they lost a tough one last night on a Cody Ransom grand slam for the Brewers. One and two on Allen Craig. On the ground to roll it. Throw right on the button. While we have a moment, let's go back to Greg Amsinger at the MLB Network for a game break. Well, Tom, earlier we showed you doubles from Prince Fielder and Big Jim Tony. You want a home run, you got to go to the number nine spot in the order. Robert Andino, his fifth of the year. 
Always trying to snap the Tigers' six-game winning streak. It's three to one in the third inning. And guys, Lay and Chen looking for his eighth win of the year. He's winless in his last four starts. Back to you in Cincinnati. And those are the numbers we were talking about with Baltimore having won just six times over their last 20 games. Molina ground ball to Kozar. Both starters mighty impressive so far today. If not the most, certainly one of the most offensive friendly ballparks in all the Major League Baseball. Yet, this goes to show you not only the two starters today, but really this entire Red Staff pitching half their games in Great American Ballpark. You can pitch in this yard. That would hook down the right field line into the corner. This will be at least two bases for Bruce, and he'll pull the shoot. That second may have pulled that shoot a little bit too early because it appeared as though Beltron was having a hard time finding the handle. And it looked off the bat, possibly a triple was in play here, the way that it landed softly and got all the way to the corner. Let's watch Bruce here. It's a breaking ball down and in. That's in his happy zone right down there. A little ginger rounding the base there, it looked like. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Stranded 22 out of 47 leadoff doubles this year, more than any other team in baseball. In fact, they had it happen to him here last night when Brandon Phillips began the second inning with a double, and he didn't even advance to third. Ludwig bounced into a fielder's choice his first time up. And one of the rare times in the game so far today where Loesch has fallen behind 2-0. Oh. Yeah, and obviously Ludwig's job here is to find some way to get Jay Bruce over to third base. Doing a good job staying off pitches here. Reds have been looking for either Ryan Ludwig or Chris Heisey to really grab that left field position and run with it. And it's been Ludwig clearly based on those numbers. Who is trending upward here over the last month of the season. Although many want to see Todd Frazier get that opportunity. If Scott Rowland is going to see more playing time at third base. Frazier has been filling in for him there. But can also play the outfield. That ball hit hard. And Bruce was late getting back. He's going to have to stop. And that is terrible base running by the Reds right fielder. Yeah, and even the fans here in Great American Ballpark understood that. They didn't like this. Poor read off the bat by Jay Bruce. Started out towards third base. And by the time he got back to the bag. Too late. This is a ball he really should have advanced on. You see, Jay is deep in center field to his left. Just didn't read the ball well off the bat. That's a case when we talk about get the runner over to the third any way you can. It's not always about hitting the ball to the right side. Get the ball deep enough to center field in the gap to move up a runner, and it looked like he did his job or should have been enough to get the job done. Scott Rowland looks at a strike, so rather than Bruce standing at third with one out, he's still out there at second with one out. Rowland singled his only at bat today. Scott Rowland, one more double. The number 50 on that list. How about that? The babe. You pass a babe in anything, you've had a pretty doggone good career. Now that's something to tell the grandkids about, huh? And look at the names. Just right there. Wow.
2 1 pitch taken right down the middle of strike. Right now, Dusty Baker would sign up for a base hit. Just a single will do. This has been sort of a bugaboo for the Reds this year, situational hitting. Well, they really have not been a good situational team from an offensive standpoint. Not only their runners in scoring position, batting average among the worst in all the baseball. There's strike three to roll them. Let's check in once more with Greg Amsinger from the MLB Network Studio. Tom, thank you. In Atlanta, Ike Davis has been red hot lately. Connects for his 13th home run off Tommy Hansen. It is in the fourth inning, and the Mets have tied things up three apiece. In case you're wondering, guys, Ike is two for two, average at 209. Back to you in Cincinnati. Greg, thank you very much. So a leadoff double by Jay Bruce, and he is still standing at second base. Now with two outs in the inning, and here's a number eight hitter with a base open. Devin Mezzarocco. Reds have very high hopes for this rookie catcher. Number one pick out of Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. It's only been a two day a week catcher, catching both today's starter Mike Leake and right hander Homer Bailey. Ryan Hannigan catches the other three starters. Yeah, you know, he has scuffled against right handed pitching, and it's tough when you're a catcher because normal bench players can get their playing time based on matchups. Right handed hitter will play against left handed pitching. But with catching, you're absolutely right. Dusty Baker likes to keep him together with League. The younger guys uh, catch the more experienced pitchers. So you've got to take your, your starting jobs when you can. And for Mezzarocco, he's seen a lot of right handed pitching. More importantly, is the job that he does behind the plate. Dusty Baker has said uh, said before the year began he didn't think he would be anywhere close to seeing Mezzarocco offensively as to where he's going to be down the road. He refers to him as a force in the middle of our lineup. For more on Devin Mezzarocco, here's Ken Rosenthal. Well, you're right, Tom. They see Mezzarocco as a potential cleanup man down the road. And it's interesting what Tom was saying about the difficulty of not playing every day, and yet he told me yesterday Hey, it's not such a bad thing because I get to study video of opposing pitchers, really take my time to learn the league, and in that aspect, it's a benefit. Well, Mezzarocco draws the four pitch walk, and here is Mike Leak. And a tapper by the diving third baseman, and a throw is not in time, and Leak with an infield hit. to see right there that Mike Leake not just a good hitter but a good athlete Rafael for Kyle still one of the strongest arms in the game out of the shortstop position he's going to throw out 99 percent of pitchers on this infield ground ball but not Mike Leake watch him get out of the box and down the line he's smelling a hit we're talking about a guy who can swing the bat field his position hold runners and get down the line and former childhood friends, in fact, childhood teammates, Steven Strasburg and Mike Leake growing up in San Diego. They are loaded now for Zach Kozart. The Reds left two on in the second, two on in the third. They're loaded in the fourth, and you go back to their days in San Diego with a San Diego sting. How about that? How about that? Steven Strasburg, the pitcher, Mikey Leake, as they called him back then, played anywhere, mostly catcher on that team. They had three other kids on this team, Tom, who went on to sign professional contracts and are playing in the minor leagues. Brett Bochy, the son of manager Bruce Bochy, played du playing double A ball for the Giants right now. Thomas Neal playing double A with the injuries with the Indians, and Xavier Scruggs, another one from that team, playing double A in the Cardinals organization. Five professional players on the same 11-year-old travel team. Wow. On the outside corner, a strike to even account on Kozai. Bruce started the inning with a double, was still there with two outs, but since a walk to Mezzarocco, an infield hit by the pitcher. And it's popped up down the right field line. 
So the woes continue for Cincinnati batting with runners in scoring position. We played four. Still no score. Weiser, get a look at downtown Cincinnati and certainly the residents here were thrilled beyond description recently. Uh, Forbes magazine listing the top 100 cities in America to live in. Cincinnati ranked number nine on that list, but among the top 75 most populated cities, it was number one in America. And the revitalization of uh, this downtown, thanks in large part to the man who's a general managing partner of this franchise and part one time owner of the St. Louis Cardinals, Bob Castellini. He popped up here to see Tom Berducci before the game today. <laughs> well, that's, that's when you know your big league when the owner's coming in to see you. Well, they've done a great job here. One hopper off the bat of David Freeze, and he's thrown out by Kozar. Great fans here in Cincinnati. Place packed today, and they're seeing something rare. We don't see many pitching duels at this ballpark. We've seen 66 consecutive games in this ballpark with a home run. 66 straight games with at least one home run. Now, we still got a ways to go today, but that's the longest such streak going back to the days of Coors Field pre-Humidor. Had 80 straight games of the home run, 2002-2003. But both of these pitchers, Mike Leake, Kyle Loesch, making the ballpark look big today. Ladder third in the Cardinal batting order. Leake is retired. Eight in a row since he intentionally walked Schumacher back in the second inning. First time today where he have a, a very light rain beginning to fall. And there's that comeback fastball from Lee. It looks like it's going to hit a left handed batter in the hip and it comes back to the inside corner of the plate. Of the fans well aware of the forecast here today. In fact, straight on through tomorrow night. Well, after shaking off his catcher a number of times, Leak throws a pitch that is served into left field by Schumacher for a one-out hit. Visit MLB.com slash fan guide and register for a chance to win a VIP experience for two. To the 2012 Major League Baseball World Series game presented by Scotts, the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. For some Cardinals winning the World Series in unbelievable fashion last year. That one fouled off as Loesch tries to advance Schumacher with a butt. Cardinals claiming the wild card spot the final day of the season. Trailed Atlanta by 10 and a half games on August the 24th. Many forget they were third in the wild card behind not only Atlanta, but also the Giants. Well, I guarantee their run will be invoked by many teams this year who are hanging on to a thread of a hope when they get to August. Good bunt by Loesch and the underhand feed by Votto to Phillips. And Schumacher in scoring position with two away. I really like this when it's an obvious bunt situation. Get the bat out right away. You're not fooling anybody. Get yourself in good bunting position early. And that's what Kyle Loesch does right there. Greg Maddox, one of the best bunters I saw, was always good about that. He'd be out there. Pitcher was still taking his sign. He says, I'm not trying to fool you. I can get this ball down even when you know I'm bunting. Talked about all the hitting woes with runners in scoring position by Cincinnati. Conversely, the Cardinals among the very best. And here's for a call. Fastball ran in on him. Strike one. Call a single to center, stolen a base, and bounced out to Kozai. Saw 14 pitches his first two times to the plate. Ran it in on him again to get ahead 0 2. 
Yeah, that's the whole key with Mike Leak. The run on the, watch his release point here. It's going to be slightly three quarters. You're talking about a guy as a right handed pitcher, five foot ten and a half. I know your media guy, Tom, lists him at six foot one. That's a little bit of a fib. But you see that release point. He can't, he, because he doesn't have size, he can't create a downward plane with his fastball. So with his lower release point, he creates a run on the pitch. So you're talking about someone who doesn't really drive the ball down with the fastball, but drives it more horizontally. Now, he doesn't want it total horizontally, but as you mentioned, he's got that comeback two-seamer at the hip of a left-hander, but he can also run the cutter in on the hands of a left-handed hitter. So if you're a left-handed hitter and you read fastball, you're not sure if that pitch is going to run in on your hands or run back the other way, and he does that with the lower release point. Runner at second base in a scoreless game with two away. One and two on for a call, and here it comes. Popped up and rolling his air, and the beat goes on for Lee. He's only allowed three hits through five shutout innings. Chevrolet. Chevrolet has that feeling back. Feel it too with Chevy confidence. Well, the rain continuing to very, very lightly fall. Just started in the top of this fifth inning. Scoreless game as we go to the last of the fifth. Stubbs, Votto, and Phillips against Kyle Loesch. Cardinals with three hits. They've left four. The Reds with four hits. They've stranded seven. And all seven have come in the last three innings. Stubbs quickly behind 0 and 2. He's tried to bunt his way on, thrown out, and then single to center in the third inning. Easy for Schumacher looking into the rain, one out. Kyle Loesch continuing to roll along. You mentioned the surgery. Kyle Loesch told me he's pitching what he believes to be the best baseball of his career. He's doing it at the age of 33. Go back to 2009. He was squaring around to bunt. He got hit with a pitch on the forearm. Now, he really struggled for a while, went on the disabled list. It wasn't until a year later that they went in and did a surgery for something called extertion, exter, I can't, easy for me to say, right? Compartment syndrome, where the sheath that surrounded his forearm muscle was constricting the muscle. Now, doctors really had not seen this in a pitcher. They've seen it with distance runners, motocross riders. But basically, that must, the, the sheath was not allowing his muscle as he warmed up and pitched deep into a game to expand. So he would hit a wall at about 50 pitches as a starting pitcher. And in fact, he would lose feeling in his hand, almost as if your foot falls asleep, his hand would fall asleep. So they said, you can either have this surgery or you're basically going to become a short reliever. Well, he had the surgery. They pretty much released that sheath so that the forearm can expand. In fact, he told me during the course of the game, his right forearm can get as large as three inches larger than wow. his left forearm. But clearly, it has really changed his career. Well, there's no debate about that. Loesch wound up as a 14-game winner last season for this Cardinal team. And while Lance Lynn went to the All-Star game, one could make an argument that Loesch has been their most consistent starter. I would agree with that. I mean, last two years, Tom, 23 and 10 with a 3-1-6 ERA and a supreme strike thrower. Weak fly ball off the bat of Votto, and he's retired for the second time. Two are out. Of course, we asked a Twitter poll question earlier today. No one in baseball more active than that dat dude BP Brandon Phillips. Guess who's back? Yep. Did y'all miss me? Because I missed y'all coming back from the All-Star break. It was quite interesting last night in an interview after the game. Brandon Phillips, who had the big game, three hits, started the three-run seventh inning as there's a bouncing ball that's in the center field. A two-out hit for Phillips, his first hit today. 
The Reds were on an 11 game road trip through San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego leading up to the All Star break. And it was the first weekend that Sunday where he found out he was not named to the All Star team. He did not play well the remainder of that trip. In fact, a couple of base running miscues had a big part in the only Reds loss that they had in a four game set in San Diego. He said last night after the game, you know, I, I really let it bother me not being named to the All-Star team. He said, I went back home, sat down with my mom and dad. They've been married for nearly 40 years now. And he said it puts some perspective. But I got to get back here and, and play better baseball. Tom, a couple of things I admire about that. Number one is the honesty. And number two, how much the All-Star game means to him. A lot of times we think of these guys as being jaded. It's not that big of a deal. Players don't care about it. There's a pride factor at play here. No doubt about that. You're looking at a guy who considers himself one of the best second basemen of baseball. I definitely wanted to be in Kansas City. Jay Bruce was there. Bruce one of two today. Doubled his last time up. Behind an account 0 and 2. Well, for more on the Brandon Phillips saga, Kenny. Well, Tom talks about his honesty, and I did an interview with him for FoxSports.com, a video interview before the game, and Brandon Phillips said flat out, I did not deserve to be an All-Star. Well, for those of us that have a chance to see him play uh, every day, uh, I'm not quite sure that I would agree with his summation. Runner goes and hooked down the right field line into the corner. On his way to third is Phillips. He is going to score on a double by Jay Bruce, the game's first run. That's called beating the shift right there. Swung around to the right side. And he really hooked this ball. You see Schumacher, the second baseman, playing well over and deep with two outs at the second base position. And this is an easy send here with Brandon Phillips with two outs. For the Reds with a 1-0 lead, and now Ryan Ludwig go for two in the game. Bruce driving in his team high 57th run of the season. And you know Dusty Baker sitting down there in that dugout and of course we have no control we have no idea what the weather has in store for us the rest of the day. But seeing as if we just began to have a little bit of rainfall to for the Reds to score here in the bottom of the fifth inning would make this an official game should we have little cooperation from Mother Nature. One and two. Yeah, and I think as the a game like this begins to take on a personality, if you will, with both pitchers you can see on top of their game have been for the last month or so. You get a sense rain or no rain, clouds or no clouds, that getting on the board first in a game like this is paramount. On the ground it's Schumacher, and he'll throw out Ludwig to end the inning. But a two out single by Phillips paves the way running on a one two pitch and he scores on the double by Bruce one nothing red legs. It's for G network and by Dow together the elements of science and the human element can solve anything. Cardinals having a hard time trying to solve Mike Lee. 
He has allowed only three base hits. And two of them came over the first two innings. But right through the very heart of this Cardinal lineup here in the sixth, after the Reds got on the board in the bottom of the fifth inning, Jay Holiday, then Beltron. You know, all of us who follow baseball and if you really pay particular attention to in this case a National League Central Division you like to you know, start looking at strengths and weaknesses of all the clubs inside the division as Jay has gone on strikes I think everybody would agree Tom Verducci tell me if you agree with this summation the Reds without a doubt have right now not to say it will be down the road but right now they have the best starting rotation. You flip a coin between the Reds and the Pirates. They've virtually gone one to the entire season for best bullpen in the National League. And the Cardinals unquestionably are the best offensive club among the three. Fair? I think that's a great characterization. I think especially the job the Reds have done with their staff in this ballpark. Extremely impressive. Base hit by Holiday into center field. He's a one out base runner. Well, we're getting breaking news right now uh, from Ken Rosenthal about Reds ace Johnny Cueto. Kenny? Tom, not official yet. There is talk that the Reds are going to scratch Cueto tomorrow because of a blister and pitch Homer Bailey instead. Also with the Reds, they have just traded Paul Yanish, their infielder, to the Braves for a AAA pitcher named Todd Redman. Now, this deal was initiated by the Braves. They need a shortstop with Andrelton Simmons down. And really, the Reds are very deep at this position. Cozart in the majors, D.D. Gregorius at AAA, and Billy Hamilton at AA. Well, the name Billy Hamilton, of course, for many who follow uh, baseball at the minor league level. I had two general managers in the major leagues last week. Tell me that Billy Hamilton is the most exciting baseball player they have ever seen. Already over 100 stolen bases in 85 minor league games this season. That's worth repeating. Over 100 stolen bases, and here we are just really beginning July. He stole over 100 bases last year. That's in the air, tailing away from Ludwig, and he'll make the running grab for the second out of the inning. Billy Hamilton is a shortstop. Many believe he is going to wound up being a center fielder when all is said and done. Began the year at Bakersfield in single A. He's been moved up to Pensacola, and in his first three games there, he already has four stolen bases. If you're wondering, the all-time baseball record of stolen bases in a season belongs to the former Cardinal, Vince Coleman, who in 1983 stole 145 bases in Class A Macon. And Hamilton very much on pace to make a run at that record. Strike one to Alan Craig. I've got to believe that I know Billy Hamilton just got promoted to double A. But why would he not be a factor in a September pennant race as someone coming off the bench with expanded rosters? Go back and look at the, the run the Cardinals had last year. They had several long extra inning games and Tony La Russa was masterful at using that expanded roster. A guy like Adron Chambers made a big difference in some games as a pinch runner. So certainly, at the very worst, I would expect to see a kid like Hamilton here as a, a bench weapon in a September pennant race. Strike the count on Alan Craig. Reds leading one nothing. And back up through the middle, and there's Phillips. And the feed to Kozar to end the inning. The three-time Gold Glove winning second baseman flashing the leather to end the inning.
unties the ball game. A two-run shot is 24th of the year. Put him up 4-2. Soriano got his 22nd save. Cano also hit a home run. The Yankees win 5-3. In Toronto, it was the Edwin Encarnacion show. Look where this thing lands. Over the CRV sign. Are you kidding? Two home runs of the game, 25 on the year. Blue Jays win 11-9. Tom Burnham and Tom Verducci, back to you in Cincinnati. Of course, Edwin Encarnacion came up originally with the Reds, and how ironic it is that Scott Rowland is the batter to lead off the inning because it was a deal made by Walt Jockety. Sending the highly touted yet underperforming Encarnacion to Toronto to get Scott Rowland. Blue Jays have had success with that recipe. Rowland hooks one into left field. It's going to fall in a hit in front of Holiday. And rolling back in the lineup for the first time since a break, and he has a couple of hits. Guys like Jose Bautista, Colby Rasmus, guys who maybe couldn't find a home and found one in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Well, among all the non All Stars, Edwin Encarnacion has more home run than any of those guys. Got a nice contract extension as a consolation prize, though. He that did. worked out okay. It's a better way to spend your break. Strike one to Devin Mesoraco, who's bounced to third and walked. Kyle Loesch has been on. Just an amazing run of outstanding pitching. Not only today, but really after a very bad May. Going into June, six innings, one run. Seven and two thirds, no run. Seven innings, three runs. In his last four starts, seven or more innings in every one of them, has not allowed more than two runs in any of those games. But on the short end today of a one nothing game. Well, Tommy's unusual in today's game because he does it without velocity and without strikeouts. With the fourth lowest strikeout rate in the National League 5.2. And yet his ERA under three. In the last 15 years only one pitcher has had that low of a strikeout rate with an ERA under three and that's Tom Glavin. In some ways he's a right handed Tom Glavin. Especially with the changeup. It's a game now predicated on power. We see more strikeouts in the game than ever before. And at 33, Kyle Loesch has figured out the way to get people out is not necessarily with power. He came up as a much harder thrower, relied on the four seam fastball much more than he does now. And really found pitching religion with that two seamer and changeup. One and two on Devin Mezzarocco. That'll even account. Raining harder now than it has at any point all day. Or at least while we've been playing baseball. Many of the fans have made their way up underneath looking for protection. Or you just do it that way. Hit in the right field. Roland thought about it, but getting to it quickly was Beltron, and now there are two on with nobody out. Let's take a look at our cheap game summary. It's been all about the pitching. Loesch has allowed just the one run on the double by Jay Bruce and Mike Leak working on a four hitter. Both teams have had their chances, far more for the Reds in St. Louis. A good execution by these pitchers to make pitchers in tight situations. And here's one right here. Obviously the Cardinals will expect a bunt with Mike Leake. He is a good hitting pitcher. We've seen that already. But here bunt situation. Well, Tom Verducci one of your four keys to the game was beware of the sixth and seventh innings. Those have been black holes for this Cardinal team. So far this year whether it's well, primarily we're talking about in their bullpen. The eighth and the ninth they've been pretty good. But in the sixth and the seventh. Dreadful. And. It was a seventh inning that bit starter and eventual loser Adam Wainwright here last night. 
In some, in some ways, you can make a case the sixth inning is the most important inning in baseball. Leak lays it down, and Lowe thought about it. And elects to go to first base, so Leak advances the runners. He's done it all here today on the mound and at the plate. A hit now sacrifice. Yeah, I thought actually Loesch did have a play at third base, especially being a force play and not a tag play. Normally the speed of the bunt, direction of the bunt, will tell you where the play is. You don't need a call. I think he has the out in order here at third base. You don't need a call. The speed of the bunt directly at you will tell you you have a play. He took a conservative route and took the out at first base. So now the infield of the Cardinals comes in. Zach Cozart left the bases loaded with a fly ball to right, ending the fourth inning. And now bats with second and third and one out here in the sixth. Cozart had a big sack fly in the game last night. Capping off that three-run seventh inning. Rolling tags, he'll score. And the throw goes into third, so the rookie goes up with a sack fly to drive in Rowland, making it 2 nothing. Great at bat by Zach Kozar getting the job done. You mentioned it, the sacrifice fly last night. Driving the ball into the outfield well deep enough to score the run. And getting back to what I said about the sixth inning as we watch this pitch here, he just does a nice job on a ball that's down. Driving it deep enough in the air in the outfield. The highest scoring inning in a baseball game is the first inning. It's the only inning where you can literally drop your lineup to score the most runs. The next highest inning is the sixth. And that's where the managers make their money. Generally, a starting pitcher is starting to run up his pitch count. You face decisions, especially in the National League, about when to remove a pitcher, when to get into your bullpen. Sixth inning, you're not going to see the premium arms out of your bullpen. A lot of games turn in the sixth inning, and they certainly have for the Cardinals this year. With an ERA over five in the sixth inning. Alosh. Closing in on 100 pitches. This figures to be his final batter either way. He either gets out of the inning or they bring in the left-hander Barrett Browning, who's down in their bullpen warming up to face Joey Votto. Yeah, he's, he's a guy that's got over 100 pitches only four times this year, a high of 107, mostly because he's been so efficient with his pitches. The Reds have made him work today. Ball in the center field, and that will retire the side. But the Reds have scored in each of the last two innings. And we're back after a word from your local Fox station. A foolproof stat, just as the Cardinals can count on Yadier Molina, you can count on Just for Men Auto Stop for foolproof results. Getting better with age indeed. Yadier turning 30 years young here yesterday. Last year was his best full season offensively of his outstanding major league career. And so far this year even better than last year. Molina Freeze and Schumacher then a pitcher spot. The day figures to be over for Kyle Loach. Mike Leake uncorks his 80th pitch of the afternoon, and it's in the air and well hit to left field, and it will fly out of here. Molina gets St. Louis on the board. Molina number 14, and that makes it 67 consecutive games with a home run here at Great American Ballpark. More importantly, the lead is shaved in half. Yeah, it looked like Mike Leake was trying to get him out one way, and that was with the breaking ball in this at bat. And by the third one, Yadier Molina jumped on it. Watch him keep his head on this ball. Breaking ball up. 
And as you mentioned, 67 games in a row with a home run in this ballpark. It was back to a game between the Reds and the Giants, July the 29th of last season. So on pitch number 80, the Cardinals finally able to get to Mike Leake, and he's fallen behind the following batter, David Freeze, 2 0. Talk about all the home runs they played 772 games in this ballpark. They've only had 60 games out of the 772 where there has not been a home run and and I think that's why there was so much anger whatever you want to call it is there's a base hit in the center field by freeze over Johnny Cueto's snub if you want to call it that of not making the all star team. I mean there is no ballpark. That is harder to pitch in than this ballpark. Yet Cueto has the lowest turn run average among all National League pitchers over the last two and a half years. That has to count for something. Where you pitch, doesn't it? Uh, I totally agree with you. I thought his numbers were all star worthy, regardless of where he pitched, but certainly deserves extra credit for this ballpark, which statistically this year has the highest park factor in terms of increasing the home run rate. Home run and a single to begin the Cardinal inning, and now it's Schumacher. And look who's standing in the on deck circle Lance Berkman. And he loves hitting in this ballpark, Lance Berkman. 23 home runs here, the most by any visiting player. There's a one hopper. That is a fair ball. And then Vado throws high. Not sure if he lost his balance. Oh, they're saying foul ball. Yeah, that is a home plate umpire's call until it gets to the first base bag. And that ball was fielded in front of the bag by Vado. So it's Andy Fletcher's call, not Joe West's call. That's a great point. You will see Joe West, the first base umpire. It looked like it might hit his foot as well. I think it did. But you see Joe West signal that ball as fair. But by rule, the umpire at home plate has the first 90 feet. Well, I think it was more the fact that Andy Fletcher also saw that ball hit Skip Schumacher on the foot. Watch this here, and you'll see Schumacher's reaction. Oh, and to the count, tying run aboard. And it's driven hard in a deep left center field, and Ludwig's not going to get it. Up against the wall, they're going to hold the runner at third. So here come the Cardinals after being silenced through six innings a home run a single and a double and they've got the go ahead run in scoring position with nobody out. Skip Schumacher drove this ball hard the other way. The way the Reds had him defense, Ryan Ludwig was playing somewhat shallow to the opposite field. And you see this ball cl easily clear his head. Well, the question is, is that going to be all for Mike Lee? Lance Berkman, a far more dangerous left-handed better than right-handed batter. They've got the left-hander Sean Marshall in their bullpen. Then you have the switch hitting for a call and a straight lefty in John Jay. And a signal given by Dusty Baker. So leak dynamite through the front six. But can't get it out in the seventh. We'll be back. One hit in the first, one hit in the second, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. Right now, three consecutive hits to begin the Cardinal seventh. And his day is over. He'll give way to left-hander Sean Marshall. And he'll face Lance Berkman. Sean Marshall, a true four pitch relief pitcher, fastball, slider, cutter, and his out pitch, the pitch he uses most often is that big curveball. He'll throw to lefties and righties. First time Berkman has played since the 19th of May when he injured his knee. 
in Los Angeles. He has always been a far superior left handed batter than right handed batter. And a breaking ball is in there, a strike. Berkman did not like the call. This year, Berkman only nine at bats from the right side with one base hit. But again, that's hard to really put any stock in at all. But through the years, far better in every category from the left side. Marshall began the year. You see some of the numbers. Forget the home runs and the RBIs, really, because of the the number of of at bats and plate appearances. But in batting average, on base percentage, slugging percentage, heavily from the left side, the advantage. That one pulled foul and out of play, and Marshall ahead at one and two. Reds, of course, signed Ryan Madsen to be their closer during the offseason. Then in spring training, had the elbow injury and will not throw a pitch for the Reds this year. Sean Marshall was named their closer because Aroldis Chapman was working as a starter during spring training. But after the Reds had a couple of more injuries in their bullpen before the year began, they put Chapman back in the pen. And he has taken Marshall's job as the closer. Two and two on Berkman. Well, it's not the ninth inning, Tom, but it has the feel of a closing type of situation. Not a lot of wiggle room right here for Sean Marshall. Now the 2 2 pitch on Berkman. Struck him out swinging. Oh, we talked about that curveball. That is Sean Marshall's weapon. And for Lance Berkman, you haven't played and seen live pitching in two months. This is what you're going to see. Get me over curveball to start out. Show him the fastball up. Ball one. Comes in with the cutter. Ran it nice in on his hands for the foul ball. Back to the curveball. Now watch him finish this one. That last pitch had much better finish on it. Good extension on the curveball. Kept the ball down for Lance Berkman. That's a tough assignment after being out for two months. Well, now the Reds having to guard against a potential squeeze or just a bunt by for a call. Tobato in on the grass at third rolling even with a bag at third. And it's hit hard down the left field line. If it's fair it's out of here. And it bends foul hit a ton by for a call. We talked about the Cardinals, their first pitch hitters. For Kong got something he liked, just got the bat head out a little too quickly with some hook on that ball. Freeze a runner at third, the tying run. Schumacher, the go ahead run at second base with one out. We're in the top of the seventh inning. And the bunt. Here comes a runner, and Vado cannot pick it up. He tried the bare hand pickup for a play in the plate, and it's a bunt hit and an RBI to tie it at two apiece. Right before this pitch, Joey Vado moved even farther off the first base line, closer towards the second base position. See how far he's off the line there, and I think that's where Rafael Fercal wants to go, to his left. There's a lot of grass there. Gets the ball down. Now, this is an aggressive decision by Joey Votto. I think that would take a spectacular bare hand play and throw to get the out at the plate. And just isn't able to pull it off. Fercal, as good as there is in baseball in terms of handling the bat, and especially the way he can shape his bunts. Well, the Cardinals a pair of runs to tie the game and now they are bidding to take the lead with a runner at third and only one out left handed batting John Jay looks at a first pitch fastball a strike from Marshall. So Lee cannot win it at this point he could only lose it 
and hoping it best for a no decision. Marshall keeping an eye on for call there for call not the th stolen base threat that he was in the past hasn't stolen a base in 30 consecutive games but the threat of his speed at first base can influence Marshall here especially quicking up his delivery at the plate obviously Marshall's looking for a ground ball in this situation but for call will divide his attention at first base bear in mind uh, Jay is a good hitter he is also a very good bunner. Should they think about a straight squeeze or a safety squeeze? He has five sacrifices so far this year. And a bouncing ball to Votto. He'll throw to the plate, and they'll cut down the go-ahead run. Well, that's where you got to make up your mind before the ball's ever hit to you. And Votto, the winner of the gold glove at first base a year ago. Looked like he took one quick look at second base. Really out of the corner of his eye saw that he did have an out in order at the plate. Takes the look at second, sees he's got plenty of time to get the out at the plate. Was not a guaranteed double play because the pitcher has to get over there and cover. It's going to be all for Marshall. As Dusty Baker will come get the left-hander and summon the big tall right-hander, Logan Andrusik. First and second and two out in the inning. And now taking over on the mound, having another excellent year. Second year right hander, native Texan Logan Andrusik. Now Andrusik has really cooled off after just an unbelievable start to the season. Here's that last play. You think about the calculation Joey Votto has to make right now. Get a double play, you're off the field. But if you're not sure about it, make sure that go-ahead run doesn't score. Matt Holliday extended his current hitting streak to 13 in a row with a single in his last at bat. And looks at a first pitch breaking ball, strike one from Andrusik. Tom, I think he made the right decision because the possibility of a double play was there, but not the guarantee of one. Jam shot roller, and Kozart will play the first to end the inning. So the number one ranked bullpen in the league. Pretty solid there, allowing just one run to score with second and third for the Cardinals' time. Sunday ticket is included at no extra charge when you switch. And by Jeep. Cardinals with a pair of runs in the top of this seventh inning to tie the Reds. As now left-hander Barrett Browning has thrown the ball very, very well since being brought up from the minor leagues. He's on to face Joey Votto. And depending on what happens in this at bat, maybe. Mike Matheny stays with him. You have Jay Bruce, two batters from now. They have the right-hander Mitchell Boggs getting loose in the bullpen. Votto without a hit so far in the first two games of this series. We talked about it earlier. Before the All-Star break, he injured his knee. And Votto has just not looked right at the plate ever since suffering that injury on the West Coast road trip. Quickly behind 0-2. I think you're right about that. I think we've seen the quality at bats out of Joey Votto, but we haven't seen the same kind of power. I mean, look at those numbers on Joey Votto late. Just about any number that you want to come up with on Joey Votto is extremely impressive. Rounding ahead of Votto at no balls and two strikes. And a breaking ball, low and away. Kyle Lowe, six innings, eight hits. Allowed two earned runs. Struck out three and walked a pair. 
But no decision for him and no decision for Mike Lee. Brought up earlier, and you touched on it. The six and seventh innings have been nightmares for St. Louis so far this season. And they've got the guy in the bullpen, Boggs, who generally is their eighth inning guy, warming up in a seventh inning today. That probably tells you a lot about what Mike Matheny thinks about this game. It was interesting before that last pitch. Yadi and Molina moved the defense, moved both for Call and Jay to play bottom more the other way. And obviously Joey Votto just tremendous opposite field hitter but especially when he gets deep into counts. So right now you see the Cardinals defending him as if he were a right handed pull hitter. Two balls two strikes on Votto. And it's on the ground at the shortstop for call. Big out right there for Browning. Well, Miguel Cabrera, Brandon Phillips. Who makes his way to the plate. David Price and Justin Verlander among more than 20 major league stars to visit the MLB Fan Cave this year. Watch MLB Fan Cave player videos. Stay up to date on the latest cave happening. Visit MLBFanCave.com or follow at MLB Fan Cave on Twitter and like the MLB Fan Cave on Facebook. A big out for Browning to begin the seventh. They're going to leave him in there to face a right handed batting Brandon Phillips. Phillips three hits last night has been on twice and scored a run today. Tom you're right that was a big out and that's why managers like to split their left handed and right handed hitters. Because in this situation here and late in games Brandon Phillips will see left handed pitching. Because of Joey Votto in front of him and Jay Bruce behind him. Now, if Votto's on second base after a double, you probably see Boggs in the game. That one hooked down the left field line, and it's going to fall in a base hit. Holiday cuts it off and will hold Phillips to a one out single. Let's go to Greg Emsinger at the MLB Network for a quick game break. Greg. Tom, thank you. Off to Atlanta we go. Jordani Valdespin going the other way. This will give the Mets the lead six to five. And despite giving up five runs in five innings, R.A. Dickey is in line to improve to 13 and one on the year. Back to you guys. Well, if the Mets can make that stand, they would pull within a half game of Atlanta for second in the NL East. Uh, Twitter poll question: the biggest surprise team in the league, and overwhelmingly, the Pirates. Can't disagree with that one. I'm surprised it wasn't closer, though. Who's your pick? Pirates. I'm with you, and with them. Jay Bruce has really struggled against left handed pitching this year after having a hard time with him when he first came to the big leagues put together a solid season against the left handers last year but batting in the two thirties against the southpaws this year. You go back to that RBI double by Bruce in the fifth. It was Phillips who had the two out single. After getting ahead 0 2, the Cardinals pitched out. And on the very next pitch, Dusty Baker started Phillips. And because of that, he was able to score on that double by Jay Bruce. Well, I think that's a great point, Tom, because the Reds are a team that really does not run very much, last in the league in stolen bases. But I think the pitch out on the 0 2 pitch. Influence the decision to start the runner after the pitch out. See the infield defense there for the Cardinals. Jay Bruce, dead pull hitter. Schumacher can't be all the way swung around because there's only one out, not two outs. 0 2 pitch. Breaking ball away. And he almost never hits a ground ball to the left side, but to watch here. This is the double the breaking ball left up with the runner going. You see where Schumacher was playing with two outs, basically short field and right field. Jay Bruce rarely hits a ground ball the other way. I'd like to see what would happen if he does here. I don't know how Rafael Fakal could possibly turn a double play.
One and two to Jay Bruce. Browning a look over at Phillips, a long look, and out of the plate. Again, a breaking ball off the outside corner. Dusty Baker told us, look, those uh, those stolen base numbers, in his opinion, are very misleading for his club. What he means by it is this is a very young and very athletic Cincinnati team. Their problem is getting guys on base. And he says that's why we're not higher up the totem pole. We've talked a lot about that already today. Bruce gone swinging to her out. Well, here comes Mike Matheny. We remind you Saturday, August 4th, the UFC returns to Fox for massive fights, including knockout artist Shogun Hua taking on Brandon Vera in the biggest fight of his career. It's a star-studded lineup. UFC Fight Night on Fox, sponsored by Bud Light, live from L.A. Saturday, August 4th, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. So Browning allows one hit, retires Votto and Bruce, and here comes Mitchell Boggs. Pitching in his 40th game. Excellent numbers. A guy they've used in virtually every role up and down minor leagues, major leagues over the last five seasons. And now has found a home pitching late in the game. And on the first pitch, he'll take care of Ryan Ludwig and end the inning. So we march on to the eighth. Reds and the Cardinals in a good one. Now, as Logan Andrusic starts off, first pitch breaking ball, strike one to Carlos Beltran. Beltran pretty much a wash in his career. He's been very, very good, both right handed and left handed. Been tearing it up from the left side this year, and that's a big out for Andrusic to start the eighth inning of this 2 2 game. You don't play the game statistically, we know that. What we do know is that Cincinnati has the best bullpen earn run average in the entire National League. And the Cardinals rank 25th bullpen ERA in all of baseball. But the Reds have already used one of their big weapons in the bullpen, Sean Marshall. The Cardinals have just gotten to their best two guys. Boggs a final out and their closer mock. Well, the Reds are very comfortable in this type of game. Bullpen has really done its job as well as any bullpen in the National League. Actually has turned up a fair number of victories because of it. Check swing and a foul ball by Craig. Two and one. 17 wins by the Cincinnati bullpen. It's tied for the most in the major leagues with Baltimore and Colorado. Well, you know, you look at their starters. Another no decision. League goes six innings, allows two runs. How good has their pitching been? Consider this. They have had 32 no decisions from their starters. The starters ERA in those games. Is there a better illustration about what a little offense would do for the Reds? Their starters ERA after League's performance today in 32 no decisions, 3.00. Old foul. That's a lot of hang with him's right there. And Mike Leak, his last five starts has just been electric, really. ERA under two in his last five starts, and he has one win to show for it. Well, the Reds on their last road trip before the All-Star break had ten straight quality starts. And most of them were not that six-inning three-run deal. They had three complete games on the West Coast trip and went six and five. There's ball four. One out walk to Craig. For more on this Reds rotation and how good they've been, Ken Rosenthal. Well, Tom, you have to wonder, as good as they've been, can they keep it up in the second half? Remember, the Reds have used the same five starters all season. So, will they perform as well? Will they stay as healthy? The answer is most likely not. There could be some regression, and that is all the more reason why you need some more offense to compensate. 
Thank you very much Ken Rosenthal. Well here's the always dangerous Yadier Molina. He gave the Cardinals a boost of confidence with that leadoff home run. They were trailing 2 nothing when they came to bat just one inning ago. Molina found the seats in left field. Cardinals wound up tying the game. Crowd no different here for Yadier Molina than it is at Bush Stadium whenever Brandon Phillips comes to the plate. Well, they like him even less after that home run. Great piece of hitting, took advantage of a breaking ball up. Started two and then laid off of it. Two balls and a strike on Yadier Molina. See that big curveball from Andrusic was not able to get that called strike on Alan Craig and not able to throw it over the plate. Dangerous here on a fastball count. Came back with a pitch and misses down and away to fall behind three and one. Put the bat on the ball. You wondered what they think about starting a runner, but now all of a sudden Andrusic, and we brought up earlier that Andrusic got off to the fabulous start this season, hit a bump in the road, and has not been as used uh, as frequently by Dusty Baker. They really want to keep an eye on how frequently he is used over the course of the year. The Reds are really hoping they can get. Their longtime outstanding setup man, Nick Massett, back for the final two months of the season out with a shoulder injury, but making big progress right now. Well, I think it's a great point about the usage, and I think this may be one of the more difficult weekends to manage around Major League Baseball because of the All Star break with four days off. Now, every team had the Thursday off. So you're talking about a situation in which relief pitching especially is far out of their normal rhythms. It's nice to have rest. Don't get me wrong, but there's something to be said for too much rest. I talked to Mike Matheny about his own closer, Jason Mott, who has not pitched since last Saturday. And until those guys get back on the mound, I think because of the inactivity, you cannot be sure of what you're bringing into the game out of the bullpen. Now you have David Freeze with a go ahead run at second. The Cardinals had not led in the game. And a breaking ball is in there, a strike. Reds have a left hander, Bill Bray, loosening in their bullpen. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, a right hander is up and getting loose. Fernando Salas. Two two to Freeze. Missed in. Andrusic in just over 30 innings of work has induced six double play balls. And of course, that's what he's hoping to get right here and right now and get the Reds to the plate in the bottom of the inning. Two on freeze. They had a pitch to hit right there. He'd like to see that one again and fouled it back. Yeah, that's the first time we've seen Andrusic get a fastball up. He's been missing down. See, Mezzarocco wants it up. They got more of the plate than he wanted. Freeze had a good swing at it.
Breeze has bounced into 11 double plays so far this season, by far most on the Cardinals. Fastball up and away. Back to back walks to Craig and Molina in a 2 2 game or in the eighth inning. And that ball hit hard. But right at Stubbs in center, two out. Nice job by Andrews. I really thought he got a better feel for his curveball during this at bat. Starting out with strike one there. Fastball has been missing down with that. It's a good miss. There's another very good breaking ball. Fastball, we talked about that one leaving that one up, another one missing up, and he comes back with the breaking ball. Not the best location on that, but after the two fastballs, good enough that he couldn't quite square it up. Good sequence of pitches, mixing up speeds on David Fries. So many things going on right here if you're the manager, Dusty Baker, with a left handed batting Schumacher at the plate. As there's ball one, you have a left hander, Bill Bray who has virtually missed the entire year with an injury. Ready in the bullpen. The pitcher spot is due up third in the next half inning. And you ask yourself the question, do you like your chances on Drusik against Schumacher better than Bray against anybody else? That one in the dirt. And both runners advance are now a pair in scoring position. As Craig comes on to third and Molina up to second. Mike Matheny has Matt Carpenter out on deck. I think Dusty Baker likes the way Andrusik is throwing the ball right now. I think this is his best opportunity. That's a pass ball on Devin Mezzarocco. And now the 2-0 on Schumacher. 3-0. Schumacher has been on all three times today. An intentional walk, a single to left, and a double into left center. And that is a third walk in this inning by Andrusik. Well, now, Dusty Baker, another decision. Do you bring in Bray to face a left handed batting Matt Carpenter, or do you stay with Logan Andrusik? And here comes Baker. Still no signal given yet, and now he comes and wants a left-hander. They're loaded for the Cardinals in a 2-2 game. And National League Central Division rivals, the uh, Reds and the Cardinals in a 2-2 game in the eighth. Bases loaded, two are out, only pitching in his ninth game this season. That's been in his Cincinnati bullpen for the last half a dozen years, left-hander Bill Bray. And they're going to send up Tyler Green to pinch hit for Matt Carpenter. First pitch swinging is Green, who came off the bench last night and drew a walk against left-hander Sean Marshall. So playing the percentages, Mike Matheny uses two players. In this at bat, he's trying to get his first lead of the afternoon. And that's strike two. Well, he did wind up with a favorable matchup. Bill Bray, as you mentioned, been out most of the year, but right handers, five for nine, two walks and two home runs off Bill Bray. His very short time since he's been off the DL. Foul territory, Votto near the stands, inning over, Bray slams the door. And Stans bring the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. And by the Bourne legacy, there was never just one in theaters beginning August 10th. 
Welcome back to Great American Ballpark. Teams have had their chances. Cardinals scores twice but left two, tying the game in his seventh. Left him loaded in the eighth. And now it's Fernando Salas on for the bottom of the inning to face Scott Rowland, Devin Mezzarocco, and then a pinch hitter. In their strike to Rowland, who has two hits and three at-bats to score to run. Salas led the Cardinals in saves last year. But, of course, Mott was a closer by the end of the year. By the Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken, had eight different pitchers collect saves in their bullpen last season. Well, Salas and Mark Zetchinski, the left-hander, a couple of reasons why the Cardinals do want another arm in that bullpen. Just have not been as sharp as they were last year. do not have a left-handed batter on their bench. Like the only two left-handed hitters they have on the entire roster are Joey Votto and Jay Bruce. Still owing two to roll it. I think it's a great point, Tom, because I think when you're talking about these type of games that become chess matches, Dusty Baker is working with fewer pieces than Mike Matheny. Just doesn't have enough options, especially from the left side. Matheny can bring Salas, the right-hander, into the game, and he knows he's had five consecutive right-handed hitters. And I think a veteran left-handed bat, even if he's just a part-time player, but especially someone who can provide a threat from the left-hand side late in the game, to me that has to be near the top of the must list, must want list for Walt Jockety. Been a lot of rumors about Mark Kotze still playing very well and swinging the bat very well out in San Diego. That would probably be the most ideal fit, maybe of anybody out there, if you can get it. Jockety, the longtime general manager of the Cardinals. And now moving over to Cincinnati. Swing and a miss by Rowland. That's the way we start the bottom of the eighth inning. Ken Rosenthal. Well, Tom, I spoke at length yesterday with Scott Rowland about the prospect of losing playing time to Todd Frazier. Remember, Rowland did not start the first game of the break. He does have two hits today. And he told me, hey, I'm realistic about what's happening. I know that I'm not hitting, and Todd Frazier is. He said, I'm not sitting here with blinders acting like a little baby. I'm not into controversy. Maybe it's interesting to some people, but it's not really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. There's a comebacker off the bat of Mezzarocco, and just like that, two are out. Well, here comes the aforementioned Todd Frazier. You know, it's interesting to note, and, and no one is debating who's going to have a major league career or the better major league career. But with all of the hype surrounding Bryce Harper so far this season, Todd Frazier has had a better year in less playing time than Bryce Harper has had. Frazier hit a home run the opposite way here last night. Adam Wainwright called it a great American ballpark home run, but you play games here. It was a tenth for Frazier. He has two more home runs than Harper. He has five more RBIs than Harper in nearly 80 fewer plate appearances than Harper. Well, as you know, he's becoming legendary around here in Cincinnati. I joked with him today about that home run last night. He hit one-handed. He actually hit a no-handed home run earlier this season where the bat literally came out of his hands just a fraction of a second before contact. And oh, by the way, on a road trip in Pittsburgh, he saved a man's life when he performed the Heimlich maneuver. Mm -hmm. And it was really a cool moment about a week ago. Uh, here you get a look at the home run Todd Frazier hit against Jamie Moyer with that bat slipping out of his hand. You know, you talked about the Heimlich maneuver. Many may not know that Dr. Heimlich lives here in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
And so after they came back from that road trip, Dr. Heimlich, who still looks like a million bucks at 90 years young, came out on the field and presented Todd Frazier with an honorary Heimlich Award. That was pretty cool. How cool is that? Yeah, that was really cool. You get an award from Dr. Heimlich. Two and one to Todd Frazier. Salas delivers knee high on the outside corner to even a count on Frazier. Two outs, nobody on. Last of the eighth inning of a 2 2 game. Be interesting to see what kind of respect he shows Todd Frazier right here. Three and two could go to that real slow slider he's got, the one he got rolling on. Rolled over down to third. Freeze plants, throws, and it's a one, two, three, eighth for Salas. Top of the order coming up for the Cardinals in the ninth in a 2 2 game. Inning and Dusty Baker going to bring on his closer. The electrifying left hander Aroldis Chapman 74 strikeouts in 40 innings. He struck out the side here last night did allow a broken bat single to Matt Holliday. Now this is the eighth time that Dusty Baker has used Chapman back to back games. Really no attrition in his numbers. He's pitched seven innings in those games allowed only one run with 13 punch outs. Sometimes you might not see the 101s when he pitches back to back days. But usually 99 and 100 are good enough to get the job done. Of course, for those of you that don't know, Chapman has thrown the hardest pitch ever recorded in the history of Major League Baseball at 105 miles per hour. That was in San Diego after coming to the big leagues a year and a half ago. Falling behind for a call at 2 0. The goal with Chapman, ever since they signed him after defecting out of Cuba, was to go be a starting pitcher. But when the Reds were making their division title run in 2010, they needed him in the bullpen to win the division. And last year, worked out of the bullpen full time. He had his ups and his downs, walked a lot of batters. Then went to spring training this year with the idea again of being in the rotation, but we talked about it earlier. After all the injuries in the Reds bullpen during the spring, Brian Madsen, Nick Masson, Bill Bray, the Reds were forced again to put Chapman in the pen. 99 gas off the outside corner to run the count full. Just misses here with this fastball. Mezzarocco trying to pull it back. And he walks for a call to begin the inning. And Chapman clearly upset with home plate umpire Andy Fletcher. If there is one major chink in the armor of Aroldis Chapman, it is vulnerability against the run game. And you got to believe you're going to see for a call running early in this at bat to Jay. Here's that pitch again. Watch the glove of the catcher. He's trying to bring that ball back. That's telling me it's slightly off the plate. In other words, if that ball's got a piece of the outside corner, you just stick it and leave the glove there. Tried to turn that his hand in a little bit to get the call. Didn't get it. Well, a go-ahead run aboard after the leadoff walk to for a call by Chapman. And here's John Jay. You see, not a great move to first base. A lot of ways Matheny can go here. Certainly the bunt possibility. 
You mentioned the possibility of for call of running. Jay with five sacrifices, but I don't know how frequently it is you're trying to bunt a hundred mile an hour fastball. <laughs> That's a great point. Did not look comfortable with this at all. He's bailing as he's bunting here. I mean, if you're a manager and you see a player go after a bunt attempt without that kind of confidence, that can destroy your confidence in the play. Sometimes you'll see a manager take the play off. Jose Akendo, the third base coach, had a little chat with Jay there, perhaps reminding him, give yourself up. Jay faced Chapman last night, struck out against him. And that one's butted back to the screen on the fastball at 99. It's 0 2. Yeah, again, just not comfortable at all. Not a good effort. Just didn't have conviction. It's you know easy for me to say here because I'm not standing in the box looking at 99. Especially as a left-handed hitter. That's a tough assignment. Two now to Jay. Well, you really got to wonder about that entire sequence right there by the Cardinals. That was a 102 mile an hour fastball. You know, now the numbers aren't going to tell you on the year that a lot of guys are running against Chapman. There aren't a lot of guys that ever get on base against Chapman. But boy, I you know, not even to give for a call one pitch in the at bat to even think about running. And then bunting with two strikes. Yeah, and give credit to Chapman, too. Once he saw the bunt was in order, stuck with that high fastball. And at 99 and 102, John Jay, no chance to get that ball down. Well, now it's Holiday. He had that broken back. Base hit against Chapman up the first baseline here last night. And that's just respect for Chapman as well, even with two strikes. You're basically saying Jay's only chance is to try to attempt another bunt. Hitter is hitting 097 against Chapman with two strikes. Holiday got a good pitch to hit right there. Chapman has only had one stretch all year long where he didn't just dominate the opposition. That was a run late June, mid June, more accurate. But he's gotten on a pretty good roll once again, named to his first. National League All-Star team this season. But Chapman had been working on the uh, entire repertoire during spring training as a starter. Fastball, slider, occasional changeup. But since going into the bullpen, he fell into a rut time where there's nothing but fastballs. And a couple of times was hurt. Blown saves. Giving up home runs. Last night, through a number of sliders in his appearance against St. Louis. Well, he is stuck with the fastball here, and I have to believe at some point in this sequence, perhaps this pitch right here, that he needs to. And Holiday has to protect against 102. So any slider within the realm of the strike zone will be a tough get from Matt Holiday. Stolen base back in the opening inning, 11 out of 14 in that department this year. One out, one on, 2-2 two -two game, 1-2 one -two pitch. And that strike three called in 100. Mercy, mercy, mercy. This is just flat out nasty here. A hundred on the black on the inside corner and down. Just no chance on this pitch. Well, now it's Beltron. Turns around a bat from the right side, and another throw will send for a call back to the bag who has not attempted to run. 
since drawing the leadoff walk. Well, I think Tom, it's now more in order with two outs. The outfield is playing deep, no doubles defense. Playing for three hits here, or two hits, to get a run home against Chapman with two outs is long odds. That is a fair ball, and the inning is over. Boy, this guy is something, Chapman. Mike Matheny's upset. Beltran's upset. Reds will back top of the order in a 2-2 game. It, I guess it was like 40 years or something between the two. And then, the, you know, the past, I don't know, seven years, it's been a different shortstop every year. So, you know, my goal was to come in and, and say, hey, uh, I can be your guy. Uh, you can trust me out there. I, I want to play here for a long time. Words of rookie shortstop Zach Kozar referring to Davey Concepcion, who, I don't know about you, Tom Verducci, and I know you're allowed to vote, I believe. I, how that guy's not in the Hall of Fame, I have no idea. Stack up his career numbers even against the great Ozzie Smith. And Concepcion not in the Hall of Fame. And, of course, Barry Larkin is going to the Hall of Fame. And congratulations to Barry Larkin. The ceremony is next week. Well-deserved tribute. Great highlight for him. Look around this ballpark. You still see Barry Larkin jerseys around oh, yeah. here. Well, he's a born and raised Cincinnati and Barry Larkin. And the fans extremely excited along with his induction. Our very own Tim McCarver going into the broadcast wing. And the late great, as fine a man as there's ever lived, Ron Santo. Will also be inducted legendary number 10 of the Cubs. a breaking ball by Salas. That's the last thing in the world he wants to do right now. I mean, everybody in here should know it. So that ball just spun right out of his hand. No chance for Cozart to get out of the way. And now you got to believe it. Bruce Stubbs will be asked to bunt. Of course, you're guaranteed if it's a successful bunt of the next guy getting walked. That would be Votto. Stubbs has four sacrifices so far this year. Yeah, I still think it's the right play, Tom. Certainly, I think in this situation, no matter what the situation was this inning, the Cardinals are not going to let Joey Votto beat them. Two two game. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. Stubbs pushes it. Foul. Cardinals have a left-hander, Mark Zipchinski, getting ready in their bullpen. Lead-off man aboard. That's a winning run at first base. Zach Kozak. And that one will roll foul again. So Stubbs 0 for 2, trying to advance a runner with a bunt. We brought up earlier. The Reds did play small ball to come from behind and win the game last night. But for those who follow them regularly, it has been a major struggle playing small ball the majority of the first three months of season. Yeah, well, we're not going to take a DVD of this game and turn it into an instructional video on bunting. Certainly technique there, not the greatest. The bat just trailed the plate too much. Has to be more out in front of the plate. Well, now do you keep it on with two strikes? I would not, given the way he went after those bunts. No sign of a bunt on that breaking ball that missed you in the dirt. Molina smothers it, preventing Kozart from thinking about advancing.
One and two on Drew Stubbs. I think this situation, Drew Stubbs, who's not a great opposite field hitter, really has to think about letting this ball travel and taking the ball the other way because Salas wants to throw his off speed stuff, the slider and change up to get him to roll over on a ground ball. Think an opposite field approach here if you're Drew Stubbs. Throwing that breaking ball again away from him. That'll even account. about halfway there on a real good throw by Holiday. Holiday got over there and got himself in great position knowing Kozart might be tagging up. And so Salas came in with a fastball, probably got more of the plate than he wanted. Stubbs with a good swing on it, but you're right. And Holiday, he, he gets word. You see him slip here on he was coming back anyway. John Jay makes sure he lets him know that there's a tag in order at first base, and he played that ball as if we were a sacrifice fly situation. That's all for Salas. They're going to bring in Zepchinski to face a left-handed batting Votto. Game on the line. For the ninth inning, Joey Votto coming up. And Tom Verducci, I mean, if you're the Cardinals and you get Matt Holliday or Carlos Beltran batting with a man on in the ninth inning, giving your team a chance to win it. If you're for the Reds, you got Votto coming up. Well, we talked about at the top, the drama between these two teams and the rivalry. We've got it. It doesn't get any better than this. Tie game, ninth inning, Joey Votto getting a chance. Well, the Reds and the Cardinals separated by just two and a half games in the National League Central. The Reds officially are tied with the Pirates atop the division. And here's Mark Zepchinski. He has had his issues, as those numbers would clearly indicate. 29 innings, 11 walks, along with all the hits. And he's in to face the best left-handed hitter in the National League. Roboto very quiet in the first two games of this series. 0 for 3 today, hit by a pitch. Two out of six with a double against Zepchinski. And a fastball misses outside and low to Votto. We mentioned earlier that the knee problem that Votto has had. Missed a couple of games on that final road trip before the break. Did not have a hit in the series opener here last night. Is a foul ball off the foot or somewhere off the body of Votto. And looks like right down the top of the foot there. You can see where the outfield is playing. Obviously, no double defense. If Joey Votto is going to hit a ball over somebody's head, the fan is going to catch it. Now, there's a lot of room in front of them. Anything in front is pretty much an automatic first to third situation. Obato, in a very short amount of time, has built the reputation of just being about as clutch as anybody around, much like Albert Pools was for so many years with St. Louis. In the air. Center field racing back is Holiday with room. And at the wall, he's got it. And they're two away in the inning. 
Votto just missed getting it. And that's exactly why you play your outfield deep late in the game. First inning, ball's probably a double. Tie game, ninth inning, that's an out. I think they're going to appeal that Zach Kozart went beyond the second base bag for Hall trying to get Zepchinski's attention. Oh, and ahead. did he touch it when he went back to first? Yeah, you saw Matheny pointing there. He's going to have to wait now. The time has been called. Wait till time gets back in play. You'll see Zepchinski take the spot on the rubber, step off, and make the appeal at second base. That's exactly what's going to happen. He'll back off the rubber. He'll throw and no. Says Sam Holbrook out at second base. Cardinals thought maybe, as you mentioned, that Cozart had touched second base and on his way back to first did not retouch the base. Cozart hit by a pitch to begin the inning. Stubbs could not advance him with a bunt. Dubs fly out to Holiday. Votto flies out to Holiday. And now it's Brandon Phillips. Two more hits today and three of them last night. And in his career is better than a 290 batter against left handed pitching. He struggled against them at times this year but we talked about this. It's a great spot to hit in between the two left handed hitters. You will see left handed pitching late in the game. shoulders of Zepchinski. They were not going to let Votto face a right hander. They will allow Phillips to face a left hander. One and one. Got another left handed batter as Tom brought up a moment ago and Jay Bruce waiting. Boy this very much has a feel of a late September game and we're only in the second week of July. Big sellout crowd here last night. The home team rallied for a two run win. Cardinals rallied from 2 0 down today. We're 2 2 in the ninth inning. 1 and 2 on Phillips. Saw the shot there at David Freeze at third base. Not only is the outfield playing no doubles, the infield playing no doubles. Freeze will concede that base hit through the hole. Anything down the line potentially is a game ender, so he needs to still defend the line. Ozark carries a winning run at first base. He was there to begin the inning, much like Furcall was in the top of the ninth inning. Furcall never moved the rest of the way. What about Kozark? One two pitch. And this should end the inning. Furcall lets it fly, and we're off to extra innings. Reds are three and five, Cardinals two and five. Eight matchups, division matchups, the Rangers and the Angels. Some will see the Central Division leading White Sox against the Tigers, while others will see Melky Cabrera and the Giants take on the Phillies. Presented by Budweiser, it all gets underway at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Check local listings for the game and start time in your area. It's a good lineup next week on Fox.
Right-hander Sam LeCure takes over on the mound for the Reds. He'll be facing Craig Molina and Freeze in the tenth of a 2-2 game. Cure another native Texan actually grew up in Missouri as Texas roots pitching collegiately at the University of Texas. And a roller by Craig to the shortstop. One out. The Cure grew up in Jefferson City, Missouri. The eighth child born in the LaCure family has five older brothers, two older sisters. His parents will celebrate their 50th anniversary next year. Congratulations to them. And he's a guy who's got starters type stuff, four different pitches, can pitch multiple innings. Javier Molina got the Cardinals on the board leading off the seventh inning with a home run for those of you just joining us the Reds got single runs in the fifth and sixth against Kyle Loesch. Molina homered off Mike Leake who had allowed just four hits no runs through the front six the Cardinals would score once more but I'm sure St. Louis not only in that inning but in many many other innings much like the Reds early in the game kicking themselves over missed opportunities. And I mean both these teams have had a pile of them. Both clubs have left 11 runners on base but in that Cardinal seventh inning they had second and third with nobody out and were only able to tie the game on a bunt hit. You see those numbers right there combined two for 18 in scoring position getting back to that ninth inning both teams getting their leadoff hitter on base and not advancing that runner. Two and two on Molina. John Jay did hit a ball with a runner at third in that seventh inning to Votto. And so far he turned in the biggest defensive play of the game. Cutting down Schumacher trying to score the go ahead run. We talked about that decision he made. Instead of risking the shot at the double play to end the inning. Take the out of the plate. Terrific play by Gold Glover. After getting ahead of one and two on Yadier Molina. Lecure has run the count full. One out, none on in the tenth. Freeze waits. Here's the play we talked about. Joey Votto, one out here. As a chance, right here when he gets the ball, he takes a look at second, but realizes the double play is not a sure thing. The out at home is, takes the second out at the plate to preserve the tie. Two away for Freeze, who has two hits in a game, has scored a run. Strike one. Both these bullpens have just been outstanding in this game today. Reds have been pretty much doing it all year. Their bullpen has allowed just one hit. Jason Mott hoping for a save chance. Zepchensky right now still officially in the game and with a left handed batter leading off the inning. If we remain tied you figure he will stay in the game. Very unusual to see a closer used in a tie game on the road. But again, we're talking about a closer who has not pitched for a week. Two and one to freeze. Cardinal bullpen, meanwhile, in relief of Loach. They have gone three innings and allowed only one hit and just two base runners. The 
quartet of Browning, Boggs, Salas, and Zepchinski for Mike Matheny's team. Two and two. Certainly everybody in this ballpark and many of you at home keeping an eye out on the game just underway the Pirates and Milwaukee the Reds are tied atop the division with Pittsburgh and the Cardinals are only two and a half back. So it's officially scoreboard watching season. Why not. Second half right. Why not. It's official. Of course we do it all year long. That's why, Tom, you've been around a long time. I mean, your days, you know, Sports Illustrated and writing and covering baseball. I mean, did you ever believe a player when they told you I'm not scoreboard watching? <laughs> Never. <laughs> why wouldn't you? First of all, it's up there in bright big lights there. You can't miss it. And parks nowadays, they're, they're everywhere constantly. Nothing wrong with it either. But part of the culture of the game, you're not supposed to admit it if you're a ball player. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, the first base umpire, uh, I believe a fan was hit with that foul ball down the first base line, and they want to hold up to allow the medical staff to quickly get down there and find out if that person who was hit by the foul ball is okay before they get back to action. You don't want to start playing again while. A bunch of people are turned around trying to pay attention to somebody and not watching what's going on on the field of play. Yeah, and you can see in these last couple of pitches, David Freeze, terrific opposite field hitter, especially with two strikes, letting that ball get deep on him. Of course, can't think about David Freeze without thinking about that. Games World Series saving triple game six World Series there you see that late swing and he's watching this ball and he hits this one hard and he knows it's trouble. Well the good news is. Everything appears to be OK we're, we're not going to go in a crowd and show you what's going on down there but a uh, little girl. Appear to be struck maybe on the arm. They're bringing her a bag of ice and obviously they'll get her out of here. But the good news is it doesn't appear as though there is any serious injury involved. Thank God for that. Well these new ballparks you know to get closer. All the fans to the action. And that's what fans want. That's what they pay the big bucks for. But my oh my. Been a lot of talk around baseball and Tom I don't know if you agree with this or not but I, I am firmly entrenched in the camp. That if you're going to put the stands closer to the field of play with athletes bigger, stronger, faster than they've ever been, those screens that are behind home plate need to be extended down the lines. It's hard to argue against it, Tom. I think it's a little more common in Japan, but certainly, as you mentioned, with the newer ballparks, and it's a great thing for the fans to get closer to the action, but that means they're also closer to danger. Now, remember when Jacobs Field was built, one of their great selling points was. If you sat behind home plate you were actually closer to the plate than the pitcher. And of course that's become very common not just behind the plate where there is a screen. But even the, if you're sitting near the dugouts. Not that far removed from the action. You know and you can you can throw out that old cliche about pay attention. It's very true obviously. But some of the balls at the speed of which they're coming you can be looking right at it. And be in trouble. Giving that little girl a big round of applause. It appears as though she is all right. Three and two the count. Well, David Freeze with two outs, none on. Top of the tenth inning, two two affair. Back to the breaking ball here on Freeze on three two. And got him swinging to in the end. Bruce to start things in the Cincinnati tenth, and we're back to Great American Ballpark after a word from your local Fox. Station. Four innings of one hit shutout baseball. Cardinals have gotten three innings of one hit shutout baseball. The four walks 
three of those issued to load the bases by Logan Andrusik in the eighth inning. And then Bill Bray, the only batter he faced, he retired. Tyler Green, the pinch hitter, leaving the bases loaded when he fouled out to Joey Votto. Jay Bruce to lead things off. And it's ball one from Mark Zipchinski. He came on to retire, did the Cardinal left-hander, Phillips. Votto and Phillips ending the ninth inning. And just about every reliever has done a great job just in pitch execution. You saw the 3-2 breaking ball to Freese, just as Todd Frazier waved the 3-2 breaking ball from Salas. And Bill Bray getting the other big out, leaving the bases loaded. Well, the eighth inning. Pardon me, Tommy. I have uh, Victor Marte loosening now in their bullpen. And with the right handers the rest of the way, including every option on Dusty Baker's bench, this is probably the final batter either way for Zepchinski. And he just abuses Bruce. Well, I'd like to say it's a chess match between these two managers, but with Zepchinski, we'd have to call it a Scrabble match. Very well put. Very, very nice. And that's all for Scrabble. All right, come on. Before we go to break, let me hear it. How do you spell it? Quick, 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 quick. Forget it. But it's <laughs> worth a lot of points. Scoring came within a three-inning span in the fifth. A double by Jay Bruce played at Brandon Phillips. one nothing against Kyle Loesch. Went to 2 nothing in the sixth inning. On a sack fly run, batted in from Zach Kozar. Mike Leak, the Cincinnati starter, six innings of four hit shutout baseball. Molina runs into one to make it a 2 1 game. Cardinals had two more hits to follow the home run. They scored on a bunt hit, five for a call. And that's all the scoring we've had in this one. The bullpens have been dynamite. Daniel Descalso, part of a double switch, takes over for David Freeze. And now on the mound, right hander Victor Marte. Breaking ball in there, strike one to Ryan Ludwig. We have Ludwig and then Roland. Did he go? They appeal, and yes, says Country Joe West. It's a slider from Marte getting the half swing out of Ludwig here. It's like that barrel did cross the front plate. Two and two to Ludwig. And he fists one foul. Sounded like he may have broken a bat. He's checking it out. Apparently not. Marte is a great story. He's a guy who actually came up through the academies in Japan. Pitched there through age 27. Signed with the Royals in 2009. Spent all of last year in AAA at the age of 30. And the Cardinals purchased him from the Royals for the grand sum of one dollar. Heard about the dollar menu? You get fries. Sometimes you can get a right-handed pitcher. Mm -hmm. Throwing it, swinging at every thrown ball so far in this at bat. Still nothing in two. Plays off the breaking ball there. It's one ball and two strikes. Two runs, eight hits, and air. 11 men left on base for St. Louis. Cincinnati, two runs, nine hits, and air. 
And 11 men left on as well. Cincinnati had big time scoring chances early in the game. They went through a stretch where they had seven runners left on base in a three inning span. For the Cardinals, they had a four inning stretch where they left seven, beginning in a sixth inning. Count is gone full on Ludwig. See, Marte's got tremendous confidence in that fastball. Not often you see more than maybe just a show me fastball on the inside part of the plate late in a game tie game. But he's gone inside on Ludwig with fastballs almost throughout this at bat. All speed it looks like on the payoff, and here it is. Launched into left field, and it is gone! Ludwig has won it with a home run 3 2 Cincinnati. Executing their secondary pitches on full counts. The bullpens have done a terrific job throughout this game. This was a case where it looked like a split. And Marte left up, and Ryan Ludwig put a tremendous swing on this pitch. It was the ninth pitch of the at bat. That was a count and an at bat where Marte was ahead 0 and 2. And Ludwig wasn't even having good swings during the course of the at bat. See that pitch just stayed up enough for Ludwig to hook that ball into the seats. And that, no doubt about it, is our Burger King smooth play of the game. Ryan Ludwig giving the Reds wins in back to back games in this. Very important, if for no other reason. I mean, obviously the standings being what they are, but also a statement Reds trying to make, Cardinals trying to make to begin the second half. And let's go downstairs to Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Tom. Man, I'll sprint around in baseball. Tom, I mean, Ryan, that at bat, nine pitches, he's coming in with fastballs. Tell me about it, how you hung in there. I threw a couple sliders early. Uh, the second slider he threw. I checked my swung, swing. And I went around and I kind of put that pitch in the back of my head. And I knew all day they'd been trying to pound me in with a fastball. So, you know, uh, the fastballs he threw in, I laid off. And, I, you know, I finally got back to the slider and got a good pitch to hit. And I think got over by about half an inch. This is the kind of game the loser regrets all the missed opportunities. The winner feels like I got away with one. How satisfying is it to win this, win the first two games of this series? Well, you know, our, one of our philosophy is trying to win every series. So, uh, you know, we won this series, and we had a chance tomorrow to come out and do, you know, do something that, that isn't done a whole lot against that ball club over there in Sweden. So, uh, we've been playing pretty good baseball, and, and uh, we just got to keep going. You know, we know we're in the, we're in the thick of things with the Pittsburgh and, and St. Louis, and we're sure Milwaukee will get hot at some point. So, just got to keep grinding it out. Ryan, thanks a lot. Tom, back to you. All right, Kenny Rosenthal, thanks so much. Thank you, Ryan Ludwig. Tonight on Fox, back-to-back -back episode of Cops will be followed by Mob. And the next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, some will see the Rangers and Angels, others the White Sox and Tigers, some the Phillies and Giants. Coverage starts on Fox at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. For more information on today's game and the latest in Major League Baseball news, we invite you to log on to FoxSports.com on MSN, the world's favorite sports site. We thank Jonathan Evans, our director, our producer Larry Lancaster, 
Scott Snyder up here in the booth for Tom Verducci and Ken Rosenthal. I'm Tom Brenneman saying so long from Cincinnati. Oh, this won't be the last time we see the Reds and the Cardinals on Fox. We'll be back here again in August. And who knows where they'll be when they meet the final three games of the regular season. Have a great Saturday night and a wonderful rest of your weekend, everybody.